to our first real adults class with our social distancing program in full effect. So um, we're going to be starting right off with drills. So Mikey, if you're out there, Mikey's an ultra heavy. He's going to beg to differ. He's going to say super heavy. Um, I'm not really about the exercises in the beginning. There's a lot that I can cover on these dummies without having to do the exercises. And then if I run out of stuff, I'll just say do like 20 burpees or something. So um, we're going over side control. So if you've been tuning in to some of the classes earlier in the day, the kids' classes, or maybe the adults' class in the morning, this is basically going to be an accelerated version of this, and I hope to work in some video analysis um, at the end. So first, the basic side control position is this clinch side control, just like this, where we get a cross face and an underhook on our partner. Now with these dummies, you kind of need to like work your way in and have it not like punch you in the face. There's a lot of spring in these arms, at least right now when they're brand new. So we're gonna start in the classic side control and we're gonna go to the reverse scarf hold position. So to transition to the reverse scarf hold, which I called it a position, but you can also call it a pin because you're pinning them down. The first step is to take my cross face and put it on the other side of his head. You would grab any material here, or if it's nogi, you can just put it here. Now, I'm gonna need to like avoid getting punched, to, like push his arm out of the way. You don't need to do that with a real human. Now I'm gonna slide my left leg, like my left knee goes to his hip. This isn't the best angle to see what I'm doing on the other side. So let me rotate this, uh, this bat boy around. Forgive me, Bob. So this is how it goes right here. My knee is in to his hip and this leg is kind of bent. And this leg is gonna be posting like so with my knee towards the sky. Now there's, this isn't as much of a pressure position as the regular scarf hold, but you'll still wanna try and keep the weight like from your side going in on him. It's kind of a wasted bit of weight if you're putting a lot of weight on your butt. So you wanna kind of like just give a subtle drive in. Hey Brian, um, we see you online. Uh, Christina from Boston and you made a new account. It's not uh, that fake account that you had earlier today. So nice, we can see your comments. This is an interactive class. You can ask questions on um, everybody in the room. We have at capacity right now in the room uh, can read your comments as well. So anyways, there's a lot of benefits to this position. Mainly I'm opening up real estate on his, uh, on his chest and stomach and we can use that for various means. Now we're going to go back to the regular side control pin, the classic pin I call it. I'm going to go on both knees while blocking his hip and then I'm going to adjust back into cross face underhook. So that transition, the complete transition, is left arm, other side of his head, swivel my left knee underneath, and post your leg backwards. Now we're also going to learn at the same time the regular scarf hold. So let me rotate this dummy on around. Like I said, if you've been tuning in to previous live streams today, it's going to be an accelerated version. Starting from the classic side control, I'm gonna first grab his tricep with my left. I pick up the tricep underneath my armpit and then I slide this other leg all the way through. And this one goes a little bit more, like uh, don't keep it bent like this, a little bit more extension. And I kind of lean into him ever so slightly. In this position, because you have this ability to like pull up, like pick up your arms, and then take your butt just a tiny bit off the mat and put the pressure in just like the other position on his, on his chest. You can really kind of like do this kind of dead weight and pull sensation, which can really make your, your partner go like, <laughs> right when you give it the juice. And you do that by kind of like floating on your hip. It doesn't really translate visually, even in person and much less on camera. But again, you wanna try and put as much weight on him don't waste any on the mat. I said that again because that's really a great concept that you can use from dominant positions is don't waste your weight. 
if anything that these grappling dummies have, have taught me, they're 90 pounds, the ones the students have right now, is that, my goodness, 90 pounds is a lot. I can't even like move these things because I'm having to move them constantly to clean the mat and then clean the dummies and then put them back. And 90 pounds is a lot. That's just 90 pounds. The one I'm working with here is 140. And my goodness, this is very heavy to manipulate. So even though you might not weigh a lot, is my point here, if you can concentrate that weight on a certain position, in this case it's right on the chest, it's gonna be a real advantage to you. So, the entire drill that we're gonna be doing is cross face under a classic side control, then arm to the other side, reverse scarf fold. Then, going back, fixing your arms, classic pin, pick up the tricep, scarf fold. Keeping the arm, fixing my legs, cross face underhook, reverse scarf fold. So this is a great way to learn the pins. You don't really need a, a, a sentient being to practice this on. This is just fine. And then after this, we're gonna learn a little bit more, a little bit more transitions, and we'll learn some things that we can do from these positions as well. Any questions from the uh, live audience? Question, Enzo? I can't see it properly because I haven't just... <laughs> All right, well, come and help you, Enzo. You can always look up at the, at the screen to get the, the good angle. All right, let's go. Let's practice it for a little bit. Do both sides if one becomes monotonous. I can't see it properly. I'm stuck in the screen. So I see your comment a little bit more clearly now, Christina. I don't know how much cardio you're going to get with this. So do some, some solo exercises. So let's check out how Dahlia is doing. Doing a pretty good job. That's classic. Good. That's nice. She's doing a great job. Dahlia, do the other side. Let's check it out. So as we, yeah, don't forget to control the tricep before you actually make the movement. So I think a lot of people will actually be curious on the logistics of how we're pulling this off as well. So you can see um, the distance between everybody with controlled walkways and everything. The distance is pretty good with the whole class here. So definitely within CDC guidelines on that. All right, let's move over to Jimmy and see how Jimmy's doing. I don't often teach these pins. So for my students, this is probably a lot of new information. Control the tricep first, Jimmy. Get, get control of the tricep and then move. The one with your left arm. Okay. Yeah. Highly recommended we review right from left when attending these uh, social distancing classes because I'm going to give a lot of remote instructions. All right, let's check out Kevin. Uh, hang on, shoot your uh, right leg all the way through. Good. Now, post your left leg a little bit back. Yes, this is the configuration. Now, go to the actual tricep. Like, there you go. Pick it up now. Yeah. You're, you're bridging into him too much. Like, you just want to just take your weight off the mat just a tiny bit. Like, put your butt almost to the mat. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take it. Continue. Fix your left leg, put it all the way back here. Uh, in your, I'm sorry, I said, <laughs> as, I, as I sarcastically remark right from left, I said the wrong leg. Good, now put your knee towards the ceiling, right knee towards the ceiling. There we go. Don't put your butt so high, put your butt on the mat. 
good. It's better to put your butt on the mat than like is overcompensating. Knee towards the sky really quick. Good. Now continue. All right, let's check out Enzo. Enzo is our newest person in the group. All right, Enzo, good. I don't know what to do. Well, I'll teach you, I'll teach you. You got it, Enzo. Enzo's in high school. Um, not yet. Oh wait, next year he'll be in high school, sorry. All right, so Enzo, let's go to the reverse one. There you go, good. Let me go over towards Enzo and I can like help him out a little bit better. Okay. All right, good. Now go on both knees, go on both knees. Good. Now go to the classic side control pin. Show me that classic one. Right arm, do a cross face on the other side of his head. Good, now lock your hands together, palm with palm. Very good. Now this, every time they say classic pin or cross face underhook pin or cross face underhook or just side control, this is the position I want you to go. Now we're going to go to the reverse scarf fold. The first step, no, no, don't move your legs, don't do anything, is take your right hand and put it on the other side of the head, elbow by the ear, good. Now take your left arm and put it on the other side of his hip, on. there you go. Now here's the tricky part, Enzo. Your right leg is gonna come like this and put your knee against the hip. Right knee against, yes, Enzo, good job. This is more or less the reverse scarf hold. Do you understand? Now go back to the classic pin, cross face underhook. Good. Now we're gonna go to the uh, scarf hold, the regular scarf hold. No, go back, go back. For this one, you're gonna take your right hand and control the near tricep. Uh, that's the far one, the one closer to you. Good. Now, this is the tricky thing. Your leg is going to, your left leg is going to come all the way through. Good. Now, post your right leg back a little bit more. Good. Nice. I'll take this, okay? So this is, this is good enough for, for like, let me, let me fix one thing about your right, your left foot. Put your left foot more towards the wall, more that way. Good, I'll take that. Yeah, that's good. Now go back to the classic pin. Now I want you to work on going back and forth between these. Rest of the class, let's work both sides. I want Enzo to digest a little bit of that technique. This is exactly what I was hoping, <laughs> number-wise, for this class, for today. We have 10 more on order. They're different types. So these are the non-articulating grappling dummies. They're just basically a heavy bag with arms in the shape of a human. There's only certain positions that they can do. Uh, Marissa says, smooth, Dahlia. <laughs> And Christina, uh, Boston Christina, did uh, this drill this morning and turned it into a cardio exercise, she said. That's pretty cool. I think Marissa would just probably like talking to Dahlia for an hour if I just set that up, you know, via teleconference or something. I think she'd be happy. She got her money's worth for today at Brave Jiu Jitsu. time I mean so quite honestly as I said you guys don't aren't really familiar with some of those pins so let me talk about this modified scarf hold and I'll tell you the naming problem that we have in jiu-jitsu when we did it we started with cross face underhook we kept our underhook 
and we slid our leg all the way through. Now this is very similar to a position that exists in judo called the kesagatami. And if I'm doing that properly, it will be around the head just like this. And you would grab the knee. You grab like your pants or something. And you could, really uncomfortable position. It's a very good pin. But it carries an element of risk associated with doing that. In jiu-jitsu, we call this a headlock. In the classic Gracie Academy, the old school Gracie Academy curriculum, the headlock escape where you make a frame like this, you walk your legs out. If you know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about, and if not, that's fine too. But we saw it as like a mistake early on. Like, oh, don't do a headlock. What are you, a beginner? And then kind of as more judo reasserted its influence within jiu-jitsu, um, got a little bit more respect for that position. But the reason that this position exists really at all is because many throws in judo are gonna be using this position. They throw and they land here. And if the throw doesn't win automatically, you can win in judo via pin. So you just have to hold them for a, deter a, a, a little bit and then you're the winner. But in jiu-jitsu, we can't win like that. You can't just hold them. And there is like a certain aspect of it's just a matter of time before this guy starts to slip out and take my back, especially at the low level. I'm talking at the low or intermediate level. If somebody is a great judo practitioner and they do a real case of Gatame on you and they're really strong, like you might not move. So we modify this in jiu-jitsu to have an underhook. So we don't have that risk of him slipping out because I have this underhook right here. It makes the position a whole lot nicer and we can do most of the same things that we do anyway with the underhook. Now, this brings up the naming problem that I have. And some people will refer to this as case of Gatami. But judo people, if I'm being a little honest, they're a little bit more rigid um, with their naming and it has to be done a particular way for it to be this one versus another one. So we had scarf hold kind of take hold as our name for this position, and then when it's the other way around, reverse scarf hold. So that's the problem with the naming scheme. Uh, so just, you know, th I think that will help if you're searching for positions. You might search Case of Gatami, I don't know, on YouTube right now, and it might be, if you search Case of Gatami Jiu Jitsu, it might be like with that underhook instead of the it properly. But I could be mistaken there. So, our technique now is going to be from the reverse scarf hold. The reverse scarf hold has a great opportunity for me to get to the mat. What I can do, using the fact that I am blocking his line of sight, I can grab my foot and I can pull it right across the belt line like this, all the way across. Do not swing your foot over because you're going to get caught in the half guard. It's just gonna be, he's gonna see it coming a mile away. So when you grab your foot, it allows you a little bit more flexibility. You can pull it up a lot higher than you would have been able to do otherwise. Make sure that you kind of trace it along the belt, skipping the legs entirely. Then we'll get them out and cross face. So the whole thing that you're gonna do right now, we're gonna do the opposite order, classic pin. Scarf hold, or Casey Gatama. Classic pin, reverse scarf hold, mount, other side. Classic pin, modified Casey Gatami, classic pin. A reverse scarf hold and mount. So it'll be a circular drill and that's the benefit of working with a grappling dummy is you don't need to stop, you don't need to switch. Like five minutes drilled is just five minutes drilled. It's very efficient. So what we lack in a little bit of realism, we make up inefficiency of drilling. All right, any questions? All right, ready to go.
All right, we're going to help out Enzo if he needs it. Good, Enzo. Grab your foot. Oh, see, Enzo, you did a big step. You really swung that leg over. I want your big toe to touch his hip as it slides across. Can you just... Yes, much better. That, that was what I was looking for. Good. Now do the other side. It might break your brain. Now go to the other side. Enzo, go to the other side now. Yeah. I'll, I won't film you as it breaks your brain, okay? I'll let you kind of work it out a little bit. Let's film Kevin. Yeah, sometimes it's like a... Sometimes it's like a brain teaser when you do the other side. I'm pretty sure Kevin's stronger than the dummy. Dummy's pretty strong. I mean, it's kind of mean. Kevin's gonna pull out his hip. <laughs> that was good. That was nice. That was good. Fun fact, Kevin is the recent Pineapple Invitational winner. As he somewhat fails. Knee towards the sky, left knee towards the sky. There we go, good, that's a lot better. These positions, it's a lot about using your weight. Kevin, you shouldn't wear that watch while you drill. You might hurt your partner. Are you wearing a watch? I never wear a watch when I normally drill. That's so white belty. I'm gonna see what my heart rate did. Oh, I see. I'll bet Marissa comments. Let's see it, Dahlia. That's very good. Because I'm focused on a lot of the technical elements of like bringing a good production, making sure that that's working out, I'm kind of zoning out as I'm watching some of the students. I'll try not to zone out. Yes, Enzo. Enzo has a question. I'll repeat it for you guys because Enzo's not Mike. Yeah, Enzo, what's your question? What about sparring? Can't do sparring. Can't do sparring. Yeah, Enzo's asking about sparring. He's very anxious. Sparring your mind. Very nice, Jimmy. How come nobody's commenting how, how wonderful Jimmy's doing? I haven't actually looked at him. I'm looking at him now. Now I'm going to make sure that he's doing wonderfully. I got a call for Braid Jiu Jitsu, so I'm going to go off the microphone. How professional is that? Is that professional to take a call on a live stream? Is this a professional live stream? Jimmy, you are doing great, Christina says. He needs Aww. that encouragement. Without that encouragement, Jimmy is just lost. So thank you. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, time. Let's take a look up at the screen right now, the big screen. 
Um, and we can see an example of this. I know that he's used this several times in his career, so it isn't isolated to just this one movement. But this is BJ Penn versus, we'll, we'll say Enzo Gracie, because we have an en Enzo here. Actually, I have two Enzos at my school, and I say Enzo Gracie to one of them constantly, so it's actually very difficult for me to say Enzo Gracie now, because I want to say Enzo Gracie, which I say almost every day. So anyways, BJ Penn is on the top. Um, this is the very end of the fight from memory. He's kind of tired. He's working the side control, working elbows. Now you'll see very briefly how he's going to go to the reverse scarf hold position. Notice how his left arm is on the other side of the head. He sat on his hips. And in this case, he did an extra bonus. We can't quite do it on our Bob uh, dummies. But he laced the legs with his arm, just like our primary strategy from the side control, which is the leg lace based str strategy. Um, an alternative strategy is to actually hook it with your leg something that is also impossible with these particular dummies. And then he just slides his foot across using his flexibility and gets them out. And I believe that was the very end of the fight. So that was pretty cool um, to see that uh, a very similar thing to what we were doing in action. Good job, Jimmy, Brian says. He's looking good. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. All right, let's continue on. Let me frame this up for you guys. To keep one less in the room, we are not running with a camera operator. Okay, so we're just gonna add a neon belly into this drill. So I'm gonna do the same exact thing, classic pin, we're going to go scarf hold, classic pin, reverse scarf hold, and then we're going to go the BJ pen mount, if you will. But he laced it with his hand. I can't do it. But you can also uh, like hook it with your foot like this. That's uh, Actually, it doesn't look as uncomfortable as I feel, but I'm in a very bad base. You kind of hook it with your leg, and you can go across. I've used that one before in competition early in my career, very, very early. But you can also lace it. But anyways, we're just going to grab the foot and go to the mat. Now what we're going to do is we're going to windshield wiper off to the neon belly. Look at this, the back angle here. I'm going to take my foot and I'm going to windshield wiper like this. There's a lot of times where I actually use this. If I'm looking for mount, my knees are hurting. Mount sometimes hurts my knees. And then I adjust myself in the neon belly. Let me show on this side so I can show the idea behind neon belly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put my knee just a little bit below his ribs. Because his ribs are very strong, we don't want him to be able to absorb a lot of that power. So just there. My foot will be in tight on the hip. And on the other side that looks like this, I'm talking about this foot right here. Don't leave a lot of space where they can put a hand or something underneath it. Keep it in tight and kind of pressed nicely against it. My hands will go behind his neck and on his hip. That's the configuration that you want um, as a standard operating procedure from Neon Belly. Your kickstand leg will be bent. Let me show this angle. Your kickstand leg will be bent a little bit and your toes pointed kind of diagonally outward. If you do the neon belly for three seconds, this is for Enzo, when you see me talk back this way, this is to Enzo. When you hold it for three seconds, you get two points. Mount is worth four, neon belly is worth two. And interestingly with the neon belly, you can get two points on one side, and then if you go to the other side and hold for three seconds, you can get another two. But you can't keep adding it up, you don't get two more. Just one per side and then you're done. Okay. So you're going to windshield wiper off like I started, and then you're going to come down and do the same drill. I am in classic pin, and then I'm going to go to scarf hold, classic pin, reverse scarf hold, BJ pen mount, one, two, three, four points, windshield wiper, adjust grips, one, two, three, two points, back down to the classic pin, 
scarfold. Okay. So here's the whole thing without talking. That was one time through. And if you noticed how I was locking the positions, it was like it snapped into place, I stopped for a second, and went to the next one. Try and do that, because then it can become like different positions in your mind. You're segregating each one. Questions? All right, ready, go. Kevin Bryan says you were doing acceptable. All right. That's my goal. Acceptability. I don't just come to the eye. Yeah, he hits kind of hard, doesn't it? Don't they? Yeah, he's saying he got hit in the eye. And there's a lot of uh, springiness in those arms. There you go. Uh, right leg fix, knee towards sky. There you go. Something funky, Enzo. Okay, okay, go knee on belly on this side. So posture up a little bit. Let me, I'm gonna go over here and help Enzo with his. I'll try and keep myself in the shot, not the best angle, but I'll try and keep myself in the shot so you can see me troubleshooting with Enzo. All right, Enzo, we're gonna try and get knee on belly, okay? So that's our goal, to try and get knee on belly. Bring your left knee to the stomach. Just go knee on belly right now, okay? And put it right, if you would, go right in the center with the knee. Oh, don't, don't do there, that's gonna hurt uh, the real partner. Thank goodness that's a dummy right there. So right in the center. Now, your knee is still kind of on the far hip. Think the center of his chest. Okay, better. Now take your right hand and put it on the other side of his head. Good. Now take your left hand and put it right on his hip. Good. Posture up a little bit. You wanna be, good. This is somewhat acceptable of a neon belly. Let me fix your kickstand a little bit. Your right, okay, good. Move it a little higher towards the head, just a tiny bit. That's towards the hip. Okay, I'll take that, Enzo. So that's the neon belly that we're working for, okay? All right, let me see where you are in the drill. All right, let's go to scarf. Scarf hold first, not reverse. Go to scarf hold first. Good. Nice, there's the scarf hold. Go back to classic pin. Good. Now, let's go to reverse scarf hold. That's really good. Good job blocking the hips. Stop for a second. Let's take your right foot and put it back there more. Nice. Now, Grab your foot, BJ pen mount, nice job. Now we're gonna windshield wiper off. Other way, other way, other way, because you just did that side. Good. Windshield wiper off all the way across. Good, this is better. Better posture up a little bit. We wanna be postured up from the neon belly. Good, I'll take that. Now come down to classic pin. Oh, no, on that side. There you go. Now scarf fold. That's the reverse scarf fold that you're trying. Good. Do you see how the dummy, like you don't need another person to like get your hips the right way. So next time, if you like come in early, Enzo, and I assign you to your, your coronavirus jail, 
just grab the dummy and just start practicing with it. See if you can go through, see if you can remember the movements, because you do get confused when you start switching sides rapidly. And that's the thing that we can take advantage of with the dummies. Let's take a look at Dahlia. Yeah. Marissa, you should screenshot Dahlia and then send it to her phone. I don't know why, but that seems like it would embarrass a 16-year-old. Would that be embarrassing, Dahlia? I don't think so. Dahlia doesn't get embarrassed. If you all use this mount sequence, you can honestly thank coronavirus because I would have not taught it. It <laughs> would have not been for the dummies. That's my new term for it. The coronavirus mount? Yep. All right. Coronavirus, coronavirus mount it is. Coronavirus, somebody. The coronavirus mount. Marissa says she feels weird just watching you. She went. <laughs> Does she feel like her position has been taken by a dummy? Yeah, Marissa's been replaced by a grappling dummy. Just a few more minutes. I've stopped actively looking. Okay, time. Let's look up at the screen here. And I'm gonna show you a match of mine from 11 years ago. This was in 2009. Um, I was a blue belt and I'm not sure, this guy's belt looks purple. I'm not sure if he was a purple or if it was just how cameras were in 2009. I don't really have recollection. So as I said, I use this a lot early in my career. I, I'm in the half guard and I'm passing right there, I just passed. And I passed using a dropped hips strategy. I like to be on my hips a lot, you know, sitting on my side. But it's not really about this pass, but that's kind of cool to see, especially given the fact that we did dropped hips guard passing. Hey, did you just make a connection here? This is dropped hip side control. That's why we've progressed to this point here. So, um, what I'm doing here, this isn't really about this move at this point, but this is very Hodge or Gracie inspired where I have this wide elbow thing going on. Um, I'm balking his hips with my elbow from hipping out and I'm probably just gonna establish a cross face. So notice how I don't even link up my hands. I am not a fan of that cross face underhook side control. 
I teach it to beginners because it's just like a, a whatever, just get inside control position. But it's not my favorite pin. I like this one a lot. You can see my knee is a little bit lower. The other knee is a little bit higher. I'm very wide, like encapsulating him. That's kind of what I like in the beginning, even to this day. So I do believe I use this mount. This would be embarrassing if I didn't. Okay, here we go. The arm now goes on the other side. You might say, well, why didn't you just leave it there? Because if you remember, I brought my arm from that position to the cross face. Well, when I'm first establishing a position, I want to make sure that I've kind of taken the wind out of his sails, so to speak. And now that I feel that he's like complacent, he's accepted the position, now I can go on. That sense of timing is kind of important. Now I get on my hips. Also, when I got on my hips, I grabbed the lapel with, with this hand, something that we can't practice on the dummies, but I mentioned it, is that we grab it and just kind of snug the whole thing up. Now, this particular variation was inspired by Bruno Polista, who was my coach at this time. He liked to hook the leg with this, with the left leg here. Kind of like I showed um, on the grappling dummy a few moments ago. Um, I really thought it was something spectacular because when he did it to me, I was like, yes, I'm getting half guard. Like, that's, that was a very like, white belty at that time thing to think. Cause like, you're nowhere near half guard just cause like, there's some sort of entanglement on the leg. But that's what I thought. I thought I was gonna like trick him into thinking it was half guard. But it is a nice technique. It, um, it's used in a very similar way to how BJ Penn used his leg weave that we saw a moment ago. So you also see on his end a very classic defense that people use. Please do not fix people doing this. I really like when they do it. So don't go and fix the whole jujitsu world and tell them not to do this. I love this. It gives me laces and all sorts of things, but I don't think that was in my game at this time. Now, I actually was thinking about hooking the leg. I didn't. I thought I did, but I guess I didn't. But that's what I was thinking, most definitely. And I just kind of swung the whole thing over the top. I wouldn't recommend that now. Oh, yeah, it didn't work out. <laughs> I thought I was going to get them out there. We're going off kind of old memories. There, I did hook the leg. I kind of stuffed it down, you see that? And hooked it with that one. Now, now I can just kind of control that leg and punch it out of the way, and he can't capture me in the half guard as easily. You can see I'm triangling my legs briefly. He tried to bridge, and then I just step over. And that step over variation worked because I had control of both legs. That's why the step over version isn't good under normal circumstances, is the legs are too easy to snatch up that position. Let's watch the final one. I don't think I was thinking that at this time. I think I was just kind of going by feel. So there we go, three points and done. All right, let's put the camera back. Oh, Jimmy is looking nice. Looking fresh, Jimmy. Let me square up the camera for us. I think this has been the most interesting of the live streams today. Uh, people don't want to watch just drilling on dummies for an entire class, I don't think. I think they want to watch a little bit more on the analysis end. I recognize that. But I also have the f responsibility of my students that are here right now. Now, um, we're going to do a submission, one that this grappling dummy is excellent for practicing. We're going to do it from the neon belly. We'll try and work in two submissions, maybe, two different submissions. With the grappling dummy knee on belly, I feel like I'm rolling with men. <laughs> you guys roll with men? Min loves to push from every position. He's in, just so you know, Min's a new white belt. His kids, three kids trained and we finally convinced them to start training and every bad position, he just wants to push, 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 push. Like a lot of white belts. White belts either love to push or they love to hold on. There is no in between. That's all that they're going to do in bad positions. Either push or hold on. And then defensively, they just bridge. I, I just summed up white belts in three main points. So here I'm knee on belly, and he's pushing me. All you're going to do is snatch up this arm. You can grab anything that you want, but I hold it really tight with the one that was around his neck. 
Now my leg comes over the top of his head before I sit down and I fall backwards for the arm bar. Now these don't go all the way down. Um, I'd actually prefer a slightly different angle. These arms don't go all the way down. You can kind of get to like right, right here. So it kind of looks like I'm doing like a really bad arm bar, but it's just the nature of the arms here. The important leg in the arm bar is not this leg. This leg does not need to be here. It's, it's a little helpful to have it there, but it doesn't need to be. Chill out, relax. This leg can stay under here. You don't need to try and like do this. You're gonna lose the arm bar for sure. It just gets too loose. It's just a quick step over the head. And then maybe as you get control and he's holding on to something, you're working the spider web position. Maybe then you can take it out when you feel, but it doesn't matter. The reason is this one is important because this one is gonna prevent this guy from turning and getting on top. And I go, hi ya, no you don't. And you clamp down with that leg. Now over time, get the arm bar grips. Pinch your knees is the most important detail. Let me get a straight on view. If you're actually interested in breaking arms, that is the most critical detail, is pinching your knees. If you watch all the old school like demonstrations that like happen in Pride, where they just like demonstrate jujitsu, that doesn't happen anymore. But in the day where people didn't know what jujitsu was, they did like choreographed demonstrations. It always ended with the arm bar and they go like this, like, like with the legs apart. It's terrible. You have to do so much more to actually break an arm if that's the case. If I can change the fulcrum point, the pinch point, to here, this is so helpful. Often by the time you pull down to your chest, they're tapping even before that point with a strong pinch. So here's what you're gonna do. We're gonna do two drills. That's the first element of it. And we're gonna do a windshield wiper side to side. Put your hands on your shoulders. Look both feet come together, both knees on his stomach at the same time, I windshield wiper and then get knee on belly other side. Okay, so this is how the windshield wiper works. Let's turn this bad boy around. Look at the feet position here. I'm knee on belly, my feet come together with double knee on belly, windshield wiper, just one knee. Feet together, double knee, windshield wiper, and then here. So, here's how the drill works. Those are the new aspects of the drill. I'm gonna go knee on belly. He's doing the min on me. I go for the arm bar. I get back up, knee on belly, windshield wiper, and then do the arm bar the other side. Then I get up, establish the knee on belly before you windshield wiper, and then continue with that drill. You can do this one at home, kind of. Just get a pillow, stiff pillow. I don't know, improvise. Ready, go. Just so you know, I was reviewing coronavirus research and things that I could do to improve the safety here. And it appears that coronavirus does not like high heat and high humidity together. So I looked at the research and the actual numbers and see how, okay, how hot are we talking about? How humid are we talking about? It turns out it's, it's inhibited quite effectively at 95% humidity and 100 degrees, which is kind of how we normally train, yeah. but we can't normally train. I thought that that was kind of funny. I considered buying a, a commercial humidifier. And I'm like, eh, I don't want to run it at 95% humidity. Thank you for not doing that. That's what it is normally. It's like, it's like recreating. It just started raining here. 
kids experiencing two things that they don't normally get to experience in California right now. No school and rain. <laughs> For those of you around the world, it does not rain here very much. Uh, ben is asking a question, how does he get the stream quality on my level? Why, thank you, Ben. What? What? On my level, like he wants to, to get it to the quality. Um, there's, a, there's a combination, Ben, of a lot of knowledge and there's a significant investment in, quali uh, in stuff, too. Um, I'm running a one-man show, so I can't be a, as quality as like having a crew. But basically, Ben, I'm running a, a, a fairly entry-level camera. It's, it's the, the cheapest camera that has SDI outputs. And that's quite important for professional video. SDI out is a professional output. Um, and uh, it's going to like bump up the cost of the camera quite a bit. Any camera that's going to have an SDI out is going to be uh, a fairly decent camera. You can probably pick one up now. I'd say used. Angela, let's go. Let's go. Used, you could probably do 1400, 1300 maybe. Uh, new around 2000. Um, so then you have to be able to take SDI into your computer. So that needs a separate card. Those cards run for just a single input. I have two inputs. Um, a single input is maybe $150. It's a card that just uh, plugs into your motherboard. I'm running OBS, so that's what everybody does. So I can uh, work two cameras, no problem, within that context. So first is the camera. Proper streaming outputs, proper inputs on the, uh, on the uh, computer. Second thing is audio. If you notice, you can hear my voice very well. And if we look up above right here, Ben, right there is microphone. And this, when I'm doing a little bit more, you know, higher end with the stuff, I will adjust it for each specific technique. So if there's like a side control, for example, I can lower that. It's on a, you know, spring-loaded type of thing. And that ensures that the microphone is closest to the source as possible. Now, as far as you can still hear me now, and you can hear me in decent quality. Now, I don't have any monitoring going on. But um, what I'm wearing for when I go around is I'm wearing this Sennheiser G4 wireless microphone. It's taped to a shirt underneath, so it doesn't get that kind of clamp effect. Um, let me show you here. You're going to hear some wrestling. I apologize. So it's taped to the shirt underneath. It's very important that we don't show the microphone. Um, so like they come with default clips, but you, you can always tell that the clip is there. And it will cut down on the wrestling if uh, having a shirt underneath. I have the ability so I'm, to mute. So I just right there, I turned off this microphone and I went to my overhead microphone. And if it was using a more proper techniques, it would sound about right around this quality, making sure that the microphone was uh, as close as possible. Um, so I could lower it to the appropriate level, being off, off camera. So that is, Ben, it's going into my, um, uh, directly into the computer through professional inputs, which is, uh, which is XLR inputs. It's going into an, what's called an audio interface. So it's, it's like a special thing designed to interface with your computer. Um, you have a mixer there, but it's not just a mixer specifically. So if you're going on B&H or whatever, it'll be an audio interface that you're looking for. Probably get two channels with your standard one. Those run 200 to $400, around that range. Um, and that really ensures that you get some good preamps on them. Um, yeah, and, and you're really going to get clean audio all the way. And that microphone overhead, the cable, a Mogami Gold cable, so you have to be able to rely on your cables, is going through the roof and directly over by the desk so I can uh, adjust the levels. Um, last, 
uh, important piece of equipment, let me walk over here, is a, a good fluid head tripod. If you, you, you don't think about these things as like a non-video production person, but when you have a normal tripod, it's actually very difficult to produce smooth uh, pans and tilts like this. And the more that you go in, the more it will expose the any deficiency. So let me zoom in on Dahlia. And I'll just try and get some smooth pans and tilt zoomed in. It's actually very difficult. I have resistance on this, and this is a fluid head. So this tripod brand new, it's a Miller tripod. It's a respected brand, but entry level. This new tripod new runs about $1,600. I, of course, pay, did not pay that. It's a, I bought it for, I think, seven or eight hundred dollars. It's very good. Stuff like tripods doesn't go out of style. That's uh, pretty nice. So it's a combination between uh, a good camera, good inputs, all the way through, all the way in your, your video chain, all the way in your audio chain, and good support and stabilization equipment, in this case, a tripod. Um, so yeah, I guess that will answer your question. As far as the stream itself, you're just streaming at the maximum quality that YouTube will allow. I have, my workflow is on 720 um, from start to end. If you want to do 1080, it's going to be a little bit harder, um, a little bit more expensive. And that's not a limitation of the camera. It's just, it's like a, it's like a chain. You have to, you have, to have the, all, the entire chain of the appropriate things. Maybe you have the upscaling or anything like that. I love this part of this. You guys can easily upscale this. Okay, time. Of course, I didn't turn on my microphone for that last part. Sorry, <laughs> I forgot I turned it off. <laughs> You'd have to put on some headphones. See, that's what I'm figuring out. Like, it's a true one-man show. You know, in, in video production, maybe call it run and gun or something like that. You might be able to hear what I said if you put on some headphones. Sorry. Um, but usually you're not the talent as well. That's the person on camera. We call that the talent. Very uh, presumptuous. So that's a rather lengthy response to your question. Okay, so we're going to do one more. Last thing that we're going to do is we are going to do a submission that's a little hard on the dummies. So that's why I only left a little time at the end. We're going to start. Mm, I think I need to go a little bit more to get a great view for the camera here. This is our workout, just moving the dummies around. We're gonna do it from the modified case of Katami, also known as Scarfo. I didn't frame my shot right. Okay, so from this position, I'm gonna get control of the wrist like this, because I have this nice angle to bring it back a little bit, and I'm gonna push the arm down. Now these are stiff and rigid arms, you can't push much more than this. But then what you're gonna do is you capture it with your foot like this. And then you lean forward and kind of bridge up and do basically an Americana with your legs. This one isn't that uncommon. It's not an exotic submission by any stretch. So start in the classic side control position. Then we go to the scarf hold. Now we get trace and get control of the wrist. Push the wrist down at a 90 degree. Your dummy will have a little trouble going to 90 degrees, but it's close. Push it down, hook, and then kind of swipe it and bridge under. Because they're hair short, you kind of need to bridge in a way that feels a little uncomfortable, but that's the idea behind the submission. All right, ready, go. Let's go troubleshoot Kevin together. Oh, Lord. So I'm going there. Yeah, basically. He was having, yep, and then just bridge up. 
then... Yeah, that's it. Yeah, he doesn't scream. That's the problem. Yeah, he doesn't. That's what I'm missing. But it is a little bit awkward. Like, if you did it a few times on a human, you would really understand, oh, okay, I see where I'm going with this. Because, like, you triangled your legs, and it's like, okay, there. I can... Let me run down there. Yep, that's it. And then you catch it. And then kind of swipe it under your body. That, that works. Yeah, that's it. That's, that's the idea. They would have tapped long before that point, I assure you. It's really short arms. I mean, yeah, short arms. But like, look how we were battling the arms yeah. just a little while ago. Yeah, let's go help Enzo right over here. Let me go to this back area. So I'm getting this scarf Yeah, this is a little tricky, especially if you kind of don't see where I'm going with it. He's out of the box. Dahlia's, Dahlia's like, my dummy is out of the box. What was that? Oh. Dahlia's doing her quiet talk. I know. Okay, good. Now, with your right hand, I want you to push his wrist all the way down. Good. Now, with your bottom leg, in this case, it's your left. That's your, that's your right leg, that's the top leg. Good, so that one hooks it? underneath, not over. That's Just come, yeah, almost. Yeah, there you go, hook it. It is hard to hook, I understand. And then you would kind of pull it underneath and submit him. I'll take that. Just hook the leg and it'll be done, okay? Now go back and reset. I, I covered up the comments on, uh, so I couldn't read for a little bit. Your iPad feed is about 10 to 15 seconds ahead of your TV feed. <laughs> How do I like Brian's comment? I don't think they do thumbs up uh, Matt Grant. Matt Grant is roadside safety. I think it should be roadside safety and supply. It feels like like roadside safety is too succinct for Matt Grant. It needs, it needs a little bit of extra oomph, oomph to it, Matt. <laughs> I think Kevin's dummy tapped and Kevin didn't stop. I mean, I was pretending it was Matt. Yeah, it is a little bit hard to get the final like hurrah on this one. Jimmy's got it. Okay, time. Uh, thank you guys for coming today. Thank you for tuning in online. Uh, stay alert for future streams. You might want to uh, like and subscribe on YouTube so it uh, kind of shows up on your feed when we go live. I'll try and schedule as many so you can uh, get reminders and all that so the schedule allows you to see when the streams are going to be. And until next time, thanks guys. All right. Who's leaving first? Wait, there's a schedule? Mm hmm? There's a schedule? Yeah. yeah. All right, you leave. You get out. Right. Sanitize your hands. Stay in your jail. Dahlia, is your stuff over here? All right, exit over there. I would like to know how hard these dummies can Pretty punch. hard. Pretty hard. If you load them up. Ow. Yeah, it hits you in the eye, I know. Yeah. I know my number will face. 